All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be a review of this knife, the Cotillery a Sabo or Le Sabo barrel knife. And this knife was sent to me by Stefan of knivesoffrance.com. So uh, Knives of France is a dealer that sells primarily or exclusively knives uh, made in France. Uh, so you can check them out on Instagram at knives underscore of underscore France. Uh, also on Facebook and then at knives-of-france.com. And then this is the blog. So uh, Stefan reached out to me through my site and uh, watches my videos. I could tell that that he actually watches them because he mentioned, uh, you know, my sign off and that I don't like blade wrap. So I appreciated that, to be honest. It might, maybe it's a little egotistical, but I did appreciate that he clearly really watches the videos. And he reached out to say that he was interested in sending one of these knives for review. And it was kind of funny because I have for a long time been wanting to try more traditional regional knives, um, French knives, you know, Spanish knives, German knives, things like that. So I was very up for it. Um, and he sent this along and I have been carrying it and using it since. So I think I've got my thoughts together here for a review. So what is this knife? Well, this is a traditional French knife from the company Les Sabots or Cotellerie à Sabot, which is clog cutlery, basically. So you can see this stamp here. looks like a little wooden shoe. Uh, that's what Les Sabot means, and Cotellerie is cutlery. So this is a brand, a manufacturer, that started in 1870. And from what I can tell, they've been continuously making knives since then. So that's over 150 years of making knives, which is really incredible. And it's just not something that you can find in a USA made knife. There are no companies that really have been making knives continuously for 100 years, even really have existed in the same form for 100 years, let alone have been making knives for 150 years. So that's really cool. And uh, the company, uh, was bought in 1973, uh, and then since then has actually been family run. So uh, continuously run, and they've also, you know, kind of acquired other brands and, and gathered in a bunch of these regional French knives into under one house. And another cool thing is that, that this knife company was originally started in Thiers, and this is another thing that um, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. I'm not good at French pronunciation, but I've always pronounced this this town Thiers, but apparently the historical manufacturing center of knives in France, which I thought was Thiers, is Thiers. And this town is, you know, like Sheffield in, you know, England or the UK and Solingen in Germany. It's the center of knife manufacturing historically in France. And uh, it's where this Les Sabots was started. And they're actually still headquartered there, but they're manufactured really close by, like 15 minutes drive or something. I looked it up and uh, I'll show you here on the box. There is Le Montel France, Le Monnerie, uh, Le Montel France is where they're made now. So still made, you know, really close by. And, and that's really cool. And this is a very traditional historic knife that I think it, it has a lot of history and character to it. Uh, it's a simple pattern, a an equal end, pretty much pattern. It might be slightly wider towards this end, but very, very close. It's a jackknife with bolsters on both ends and then a pretty classic sheep foot blade here. And this is a, a worker's knife, a, a what you might call a peasant knife or, you know, a farmer's knife. It's very similar to the Barlow's and sheep foots and lamb foots and um, knives like that that are things you see in England. Um, but it's just a very simple pattern. In fact, Stefan told me that, that he has heard of a farmer actually giving these to his new hires as kind of like a welcome aboard present. So that's really cool. And I think that it fits that that really well. This is a, a simple knife that you can use and, and not really worry about. Now, speaking of that, uh, the quality of this knife is really interesting. And I say that because it, it kind of has a mix of characteristics of Everything from GEC to Case to even Rough Rider. And why do I say that? Well, it, it 
clearly has a hand finished feel in the same way that GEC does. The blade finish, the way the blade is ground, um, the, the fact that it is made at least in part by hand and has a lot of history behind it, and the general look I think reminds me of GEC. Then the action is, is not quite as smooth as a lot of GECs. It's more like a case. Uh, so certainly, you know, well done, but not quite as smooth as most GECs. So more like a case on that. And the, um, the, the pivot is really solid. That's one thing I'll talk about when I used it. But it's a really solidly built knife, which reminds me of both GEC and case, kind of a mixture between the two. I did use this knife uh, in the yard, you know, working in the garden, in my grandparents' garden, and I used it pretty hard and it took it, did not develop any blade play or anything like that. So it's a, it's a sturdily made knife, but then it does have some, you know, less fine finishing. So you can see that there's some gaps between the covers and the bolsters. Uh, some gaps between the spring and the, the liners. And then the threading on the bolsters is, is certainly not perfect. It is, you know, kind of shallow in some places and things like that. But that's at least in part because these bolsters are actually forged. You can see a video of it uh, on their website. So it's, a, it's an interesting mix of characteristics of uh, different companies that you might be more familiar with. But I think what it really all comes out to is that it's a very usable knife, but a knife with a lot of character. And a big part of that is that it has these really, really cool buffalo horn handles. So these are a cover material that I've seen. I've never actually had a, a knife in horn but it's a very traditional handle material and boy, are these good looking. Now there are other options. There are some wood options and other such, you know, bone, things like that. But I think that this, this horn is just really, really cool. So I really enjoy that. Now, uh, I did show this already, but one thing, uh, this comes in a pretty simple box, but Stefan does this a little kind of, uh, certificate here where it tells you the order number, the brand, uh, the model, and then he does some checks here. Edge, function test, handle, and box. Uh, and then also has a little note and actually a really nice kind of embossing. So I appreciate that. You can tell that, that you know, care is put into this and, and that Stefan does care about these knives. So uh, I, I do like that. And I don't think you're going to get a knife that doesn't function being that he, he actually checks through them like that. So, uh, I certainly have used this knife a lot and think that it, it works really well. It cuts well. It, uh, is ground really well for cutting. It seems to slice really nicely. Like I said, it's really solid. It didn't develop any blade play with some relatively hard use for a slip joint. And I think that that's because it is made to be used. It's made to be a, uh, worker's knife, a farmer's knife or a peasant's knife. And the steel on this is XC75, as you can see, which is kind of like an equivalent of 1075. Now, not a high-end steel. It has no carbides, not even iron carbides like 1095. Um, and it is a carbon steel, but it works well, uh, easy to sharpen. It should be relatively tough. And, you know, with a good heat treat, which uh, I also believe they do in-house, it should hold an edge really well. I didn't even sharpen this, to be honest. It has not really needed it for, for what I've used it for. So uh, it's, a, it's a good user knife. Now, one thing that Stefan mentioned about this knife uh, is that I, uh, I'm not a fan of blade wrap. If you watch my videos, you know that I'm relatively un unlucky with blade wrap, and I'm not a fan of it. This knife actually has... Um, this knife actually has uh, blade wrap by design. So it, what does that mean? It's kind of a, a weird, unusual thing to say that it has blade wrap by design. What that means is that instead of having a kick, so you can see there's not actually a protruding kick here. Instead of having a kick, it actually rests on the tip. So the, the tip, the edge, the, the edge of the knife at the tip rests on this metal part of the back spring here to keep it closed. Uh, so it definitely has blade wrap. It definitely does some edge damage. I'll see if I can show you that. You can see just a little bit right there. 
but it's not really too, too bad, to be honest. Um, and I just didn't really notice it making a big difference in, in use. Now, does that mean maybe I shouldn't worry about blade wrap as much in general? I don't really think so because it's different. You know, the blade wrap uh, that, that you get from the, the spring pin area is usually more of like a, a roll and can make it harder to, to cut. Now, that's not to say that, you know, I wouldn't prefer it to not have built-in blade wrap. But the reason that Stefan told me for this is that these knives often got literally used up. So you see pictures of even old American knives where they've sharpened them, sharpened them, sharpened them so much that there's basically no blade left. It, they sharpen it up to the nail neck there. And if there's a kick as you sharpen the knife, the edge will raise up above the blade well. But because this knife rests on the tip, it actually, you know, you can just keep sharpening it and it will actually lower itself automatically. Now, again, I want to emphasize that, you know, I don't like blade wrap, but I really haven't minded it so far in use. If this was going to be a pure collection piece, I probably wouldn't, you know, be happy with it. But I don't think that's what you get this knife for. This, these are actually not that expensive comparatively to, you know, a lot of other knives. This knife is $57 on Knives of France. Uh, but like I said, uh, I think I mentioned already, hopefully, that uh, Stefan set up a discount. So if you use the code knife thoughts, you can get 10% off orders of $50 or more, which brings us down to about $52, something like that. Um, so for, you know, under $60, you know, it's it's not too expensive. It's certainly a lot less expensive than a GEC and right around, if not less than a case. Um, you, you get a knife that you can appreciate the character and the history behind it while also being willing to use it. Um, so I really appreciate that. Uh, it, it just feels like a knife that that's wants to be used. And so that's what I've done and I've really enjoyed it. And really this knife has just made me want more traditional French knives. Uh, I am planning to uh, get some more from Knives of France because there's a pretty wide selection. And that's another thing is that one of the big draws for me of GEC is that they have that feel of character and history behind them. They feel like a connection to you know, older styles of cutlery and older times. This has that same feel, but unlike GEC where they're, you know, getting more and more expensive, uh, they're getting very difficult to even buy. You have to like fight to buy one because the drops are so easy to miss. Um, these you can just, you know, go to Knives of France, not, uh, the website, and buy them. So that's a nice thing if you're looking for that kind of historical feel without the, the the mad rush that GEC has. So I have really enjoyed this knife. Uh, I really appreciate Stefan sending it. And I, I highly suggest if you are interested in uh, historical knives to, to go to knives-of-france.com and check out what they have. I wanted to real quick before finishing this video, give you some size comparisons of this barrel knife. So here is the barrel knife with a GEC number 15. So you can see the barrel knife is both longer and taller, although this 15 I've used and sharpened a lot, it actually was a lot closer to the size in the blade of uh, the tallness of the blade of the barrel knife originally. So that's a good example that that can still happen. Um, and then here is a case Sodbuster Jr. You can see that it is taller, um, but a little bit shorter than the barrel knife. And then finally, here is a case trapper, the classic American case trapper. And the case trapper is a bigger knife, as you can see. But I think that they're similar in that they're knives that you can use, um, but you can also be happy and proud to have in your pocket. So again, thank you to Stefan for sending this. I've really enjoyed it. I'm going to keep carrying and using it. And I, I think that it's worth checking out these knives uh, from France because I think a lot of people who are interested in traditional knives probably haven't given them a shot and it's worth doing. So if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. You can leave any comments you have down below. 
Uh, you can also check out my other social media. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at Knife Thoughts and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. Also, check out Knives of France on Instagram, Facebook, and their website. And last but not least, as always, don't forget to go out and do good.